So you went from wanting to take your own life to Madison Square Garden. Yeah. In just a couple of years. Sometimes what seems like the end is really the beginning. I'm gonna take you behind the curtain of my life and my friends are gonna tell their stories too. I thought my life was over when I got molested as a child. Then I got pregnant at 17 and my drug addict ex-husband held a gun to my head. But only God could give me the life that I have today and you can have that too. We're going from the pain to the promise in a real, raw, and organic way. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Nicole Crank Show. Do you remember when you were a little kid and you thought you could be Superman, Wonder Woman, an astronaut, a doctor, Miss America, and a brain surgeon, and a rocket scientist, like all in the same week? I mean, we thought we could do anything we could imagine. I mean, what shifted that thinking? Uh, what made us think that maybe we weren't enough? I think it's two words, limiting beliefs. I mean, somewhere along the line, somebody said something to you like, uh, hey, get your tail back on the bench, or what made you think you could be on this team? That made you think, I don't know, maybe I'm not good enough. We began to feel limited in what we could accomplish, and maybe we failed at something, and we learned the hard thing that everything doesn't always work out the same way, and suddenly our new belief system has us limited, taken hostage, feels like we're stuck. Our guest today has accomplished some really great things. Okay, y'all, she was on American Idol, and then she toured with Katy Perry for four years singing, and then she topped the Christian charts, and you would think, hey, with a resume like that, I mean, she's got it made, right? No, actually, she had to keep herself from getting stuck in some beliefs that were ingrained with her when she was a child. She could have stayed stuck there, but here's the thing, folks. Either we deal with the root or the root deals with us. She had to open up her mind and allow the opportunity to occur to her that she could do more. Through God, you can do all things. So I got a quick question. Do you feel stuck? Do you feel like, oh, I don't know, maybe you could just like fall over and not get this done? Do you wish you could have childlike faith again? It's possible to remove these barriers and these boundaries because God has more for you in this life. You guys, my friend, Tasha Layton, you know, the girl who sings, look what you've done, look what you've done in me. Her, we're gonna share her story, we're gonna encourage you, we're gonna bust the limiting beliefs that are in your life, and we're gonna help you live the life that God purposed for you from the very beginning. Are you ready? Then you better get on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. You better share with a friend on Instagram, and you better be following me on Facebook, because we are gonna cover this, we're gonna cover it fast. Get a notebook, you ready? Let's go. Look what you've done. Rapid Fire Questions with Tasha Layton. Three words to describe yourself. Fun, free, fabulous. <laughs> Actually, I've never said the word fabulous in my life. I just said it for that question. I don't even know where it came from. You said to just say the first thing that came to your mind. What makes you smile? My kids, they're so cute, I wanna punch a wall. They're amazing. Best advice? So many inappropriate things are coming to my mind right now, so I need to like rein it in, hold on. Best advice I've ever received? Read the directions. Biggest pet peeve? Definitely the toilet paper roll where the, the paper is going from the inside instead of over the top. Like, it is over the top, people. And just put it over the top. Just put it over the top. Preach. Preach. That's, the best. That's so That's annoying. The best ever. Preach. Rapid fire questions complete. Guys, Tasha Layton is here. I cannot wait to share her with you. I was super excited when she came because on my phone, I have this um, little playlist, Worship 2022, and not to be exclusive, but there's only about 20 songs on my playlist. Yeah. And you're one of them. Oh, I love that. Because this song is so powerful. I walk around the house pretending I can sing it, except <laughs> I can't. And, but what I didn't realize about you is, I don't watch enough TV, I think, because I didn't even know about American Idol. I mean, it's just a blip. It's a, that it's like it never even happened. And then you were a backup singer for Katy Perry. Yes, for four years. Yeah. And now you're a mom. Yep. Touring. Hardest and... job I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real about that. Word to your mother on yeah. like a whole lot of levels. Yep. So and now you're touring as a headliner on your own, in an RV, 
and trying yes. to like juggle all the things. Yes. So, but you're, you, there's even more to your story and like important, like deep things. So I just, I'm excited to like hear about your story. Yeah, let's dive in. So when did you start singing? My mom says I came out of the womb singing. So <laughs> I feel like I, uh, I always loved to sing and was always in choir, either in school or in church. And um, yeah, I mean, there was a period in my life that maybe we'll talk about later where I was really wounded and hurt. And I didn't do any music during that season, but- um, It literally took your song. Yeah, it took my voice. And I think, uh, you know, I feel like you grow as a singer as you grow as a person. Mm -hmm. And I feel like as God continued to heal what was happening in my heart, um, that changed my voice. You know, mm -hmm. we stay in this box of safety of what we think we can do. Yeah. And we don't push past those boundaries because of a fear of messing up or yeah. risk of looking stupid or whatever. But that's essentially holding us back. We don't even know what we're capable of doing. And so you quit music, but at some point you got back in because, girl, you were on American Idol. Yeah, so <laughs> that's funny kind of, story. So you kind of got back into music at some point. I did. So I was in seminary and my Hebrew study partner in seminary ran the women's ministry on campus. And she came up to me one day, maybe my second year in, she said, you know, I'm having this event and I keep praying about who to ask to lead worship. And your name ke keeps coming to mind, but I've never seen you do anything like that. She's like, would you consider, do you do that? Would you consider doing it? So she like, didn't even no. know you sang. No. And I was like, no. <laughs> I just flat out lied to her because music was a really painful uh, place for me because part of, part of the, you know, the person who hurt me was the worship leader at church. Mm -hmm. And so um, I lied to her mm -hmm. and she came back to me a week later and she said, you know, I know you told me that you didn't do this, but I've been praying. And she's like, I really keep hearing your name. Don't give me an answer now. Call me, call me tomorrow. But Jesus is calling you I a liar. <laughs> she, she's a very prophetic lady, so I don't know what I thought trying to hide. Uh -oh. um, and so I called her the next day, and I was like, I'll do it. And I said, I'm just letting you know it's going to stink. But the glory of God fell in that place. And mm -hmm. I was like, I was so shocked. Yeah. And I thought, I think I'm supposed to be doing this again. <laughs> it was like it was all reawakened yeah. and people came up to me after and they're like how could you like we didn't even know that you were a worship leader and so then I ended up leading worship at the church that I was at during during that time and while I was the worship pastor at the church uh, some friends were auditioning for Idol and said you should do it and I was like I would never do a show like that like never no you keep telling God what you're not going to do I know so I um I was like okay I'll just come hang out well you can't go hang out you have to like sign up to be, even be in the line and I show up to the Rose Bowl and there's 14,000 people they're only choosing 300 and I was like y'all are crazy ain't none of us gonna make it well I did make it and I was like this is crazy I had no idea what I was doing. Wait, wait, wait. So what did you sing in your Idol audition? I did a Joss Stone song, Baby, Baby, Baby. So like two lines. Um, hold on. Baby, baby. I gotta remember it. I was already feeling it. There's a place in my heart for you only. No one else in this world. I don't know the rest of the words, but. Made it to Hollywood Week, um, where I met Tori Kelly, Lauren Daigle. We were all in the same season. Oh my gosh. And, um, you know, Tori and I made it to the end of the week. And uh, it was just a weird experience for me because I didn't know any of the songs. So yeah. I had to stay up all night learning lyrics because I grew up only listening to Christian music. So <laughs> I felt like I was on such a learning curve. Yeah. But essentially, um, you know, the show is casting. So I was cast, I saw the casting sheet and I saw who I was being cast against or whatever. And um, Ellen DeGeneres was my guest judge and yeah. she came up to me after I got cut. And she said, um, you just weren't drama enough. You just needed to cry more for the camera. <laughs> She's like, you're too healthy. She's like, just just keep singing, keep doing what you're doing, you're awesome. And so it's just really Aww. encouraging. And so um, when I got cut from the show though, I thought, Something felt right about that. Yeah. Like, and I, I went back and told my pastor, I was like, I think I might 
be called to do something outside of the church too. And he's yeah. like, oh, Tasha, we've known that for years. We've just been waiting for you to figure it out. <laughs> and so then um, I started praying like, God, if you want me to do this, open the door because I'm certainly not pushing any doors open. Mm -hmm. And so I was leading worship down in Orange County for a multi-level marketing conference. Mm -hmm. And um, this girl came up to me. She was in the band, the house band, and uh, she played keys for Kesha. And she said, Kesha and Rihanna are looking for a background vocalist to share on tour in Japan. Would you be willing to audition? And I was like, wow, like that's a great opportunity, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, yes. And I prayed about it and went, I got the job. And I was supposed to start on a Wednesday at 2 p.m. And I woke up that morning and the Lord said, no, don't do it. And I was like, okay. I'm confused because I prayed about this and you told me to audition mm -hmm. and now you're telling me not to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we all kind of have stuff like that in our lives mm -hmm. sometimes where the Lord's leading in one direction and then all of a sudden he says the other and then we're like, what is happening? And so uh, I, I called him, I declined. And as soon as I got off the phone, I was like, I am self-sabotaging. What have I done? <laughs> and, uh, and so then um, I just prayed and I was like, God, I trust you. I know I heard that voice and I've gone against that voice enough in life to know not to do it. And so at 2 p.m. the same time I was supposed to be starting with them, uh, I got a call from Katy Perry's manager. Can you be here in 20 minutes? And I was like, holy cow, <laughs> that's crazy to get two calls like that in one week for yeah. a little worship leader at a little church in Northridge yeah. who's not really putting themselves out there. Like I did Idol, but that, that hadn't even aired yet, you wow. know? And so um, I just felt like God was clearly opening the door. Is life feeling too normal and comfortable? Are you longing for some excitement? Are you ready to embark on a thrilling new adventure? You are worthy. Do not allow unworthiness to convince you that you are only worth being somebody's side piece. No, honey, God made you the main dish. When you don't know who you are in Christ, you will be paralyzed. Here's the great news from what took place on the cross. Jesus defines you. Jesus does miracles and that miracles continue to happen right now that miracles are not out of the realm of possibility that God wants to move in you and he wants to move in you now that a manifestation isn't something that should happen next week a manifestation is something that should happen now in you do you believe that God can move in you tonight coming summer of 2023 the time is now get your tickets now they say it's not just about the destination it's about the adventure. So you went from wanting to take your own life to Madison Square Garden. Yeah. In just a couple of years. However, that moment changed the trajectory of my life and I went to seminary and I did all those cool things, mm -hmm. but I still felt very stuck. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd known Jesus my whole life. I had uh, memorized scripture. Mm -hmm. I was regularly in worship mm -hmm. and prayer, mm -hmm. went to therapy, mm -hmm. read self-help books, and something was not computing still. I still felt like I was stuck and I could not get past the fact that I knew things in my head mm -hmm. that the gospel offered to my life, but I was not living them out externally and feeling them in my heart. When I left Katie, I really struggled. I was like, I took a sabbatical and I went to a counseling center in Colorado and it changed my life because the missing piece for me was digging up the roots mm -hmm. of where things started, yeah. the lies that the enemy planted in my head when I was yeah. a little girl of, you're not enough, Learning you're not worth this. getting to know, you're not this, you, you're you not that. I needed to dig up where those lies mm -hmm. started mm -hmm. and then you know, use psychology to get to those roots, but mm -hmm. then let the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. bring inner healing. Because I never thought I could feel free and not be yeah. so concerned with what people thought. Yeah. and and 
be able to just sing freely, yeah. you know? And I was always worried about messing up or... Because limiting beliefs really are like walls. Yes. And you run into them and then you don't even know you're running it. They're like invisible walls that are you holding don't. you in. And I lead, a, I lead a mastermind. I've done a lot of teaching on limiting beliefs if you want to look it up on YouTube or uh, in my Circle of Friends portal. But I lead a mastermind group. And one of the things we do as part of our year-long mastermind is we spend three days together. That's awesome. And the very first, that's when we meet. We meet and we go right after those. Yeah. Because um, God showed me a vision of an airplane one time. Like, a, I don't know. I, I don't know airplanes like I don't know a song. So it's like, I don't know, some big G5, G6. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. big, sexy, gorgeous airplane out on a runway. And it's getting ready to fire yeah. up. And God's like, is that airplane going to take off? And I can see it on the runway. And I look at the back of the airplane. And there's this big, thick rope tied to the tail mm. of the aircraft. Yeah. And you look, and it's tied to this big, huge boulder. I'm like, no, Jesus, that plane is not going to take off. Or yeah. if it does, it's going to take off without it. It's not going to go yeah. anywhere. It's going to wreck it. And he said, that's the thing with my people. Mm. Everybody's like, on to the next big thing. I want to move forward. But they never look back and cut off those things yeah. that have been attached to them. And that's what I based a lot of this teaching on. And I started doing hundreds of hours of research. Um, and one of the first scriptures he gave me was Hebrews 12, mm. cutting off every weight yeah. and sin. And they are two different things. Your weight and your sin are two very different things. And so sometimes we, we address through church, through the theological standpoint yeah. only. But then there's this these other weights that we're not addressing. Yeah. We're kind of like just confessing, but we're not going back and saying, Jesus is big enough to cover my past. And we're a whole person. We are a whole and person. I think sometimes you, you hit the nail on the head when you talked about spiritual stuff. Because sometimes we think, oh, I'll just read more scripture. I'll just worship more, or mm -hmm. spend more time in God's presence. And that is very powerful. I am not downgrading that at all. Same. Um, we need that. But, you know, in scripture, it says we are mind, body, spirit. And yes. we're, we're not taking care of mm -hmm. our minds mm -hmm. either. And I think when we figure out because the enemy can't take us out. He's not strong enough. We're made in God's image. Mm -hmm. But if he can get us to believe a lie, mm -hmm. we'll just self-destruct. Because of those limiting beliefs that the yeah. enemy has planted in our brain. Because 95% of our thinking is done by the subconscious brain. Yeah, We're only even conscious yeah. of 5% of our own thoughts. So the enemy operates in darkness. Yep. So here he has this darkness in 95% of our brain that he can go play with these Father thoughts. Father of lies. But that is what scripture calls him. Creating these neural pathways. Yep. And then we live on these neural pathways and mm -hmm. we keep hitting these invisible walls. Yeah. I love that you brought up neural pathways because sometimes we try to change them on our own. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we're powerful enough mm -mm. to change it on our own. Like mm -mm. I tried for years. I went to therapy. I wrote, you know, self-affirming statements on my mirror and lipstick, you know, all yes. the scriptures, you know, all that. And, and literally it took being in the presence of God yeah. and hearing it straight from the horse's mouth. Yeah. There was a power yeah. to transform in that, that no other thing I had ever tried had. Even the other religions, like that's what was missing was mm -hmm. the power. There was no power in any of those that I experienced, only in Jesus. Only in the real God. That's right. Only in the real God, because it takes His power to break those things, but then we have to do the work. Like, I can pray to Jesus to help me lose weight, but I also have to eat less cake, <laughs> you know? Really? So, so can we the, not talk about that? <laughs> the power of God can help me develop my soul, my yeah. will, but then I have to live it out in the flesh and yeah. eat less cake. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you tell somebody who's running up against limiting beliefs in their life? Um, maybe they've hit the invisible wall so many times they decided to maybe to try to take their life. Uh, maybe they've tried therapy. Like, I've tried yeah. therapy. I went to church. They're kind of in that place that you were yeah. before you broke through. Um, how would you encourage them? For the person who is struggling, you are believing a lie in your life that you're not good enough, that you're not this enough, that you're not that enough, or I can't do this, or I am this, I am that. Know that the enemy does not want to see you free. He does not want you to believe the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. Who is He doesn't want you to believe Jesus because 
then you're going to be so powerful in the kingdom and you're going to start walking in what you're called to do in an amazing way. Trust Him to take you to the root of where it all started. Until we dig up the roots of where it started and where it began, often we see a cyclical thing happening in, in our lives where we cannot uh, get beyond this particular thing. And so I would say, trust Him to show you where it all started and trust the process of, of Him taking you through that to tell you the truth that should be replacing that lie. What's your dream? Does it seem impossible? What if I told you I have a simple five-step plan that will help you make that dream a reality? Come on, I've spent far too many years of my life feeling stuck, stuck in my circumstances, being frustrated by another failed attempt to reach a goal. But when I researched and developed this elementary five-step process, it changed my life. Now I'm literally living my dreams. I wrote the book Goal Getters because I want to help you live your dreams too. How? By reaching your goals. You can start achieving your goals today by visiting NicoleCrank.com forward slash goals and you can get my Goal Getters book. I've heard it said that a dream is a goal that never gets written down. But if you write down your dream, it becomes a goal. I want to show you how to write your goals in a way that's scientifically, psychologically, and biblically proven to help you achieve them. Together, we'll develop a vision plan, action steps, and goals that you can actually measure and assess. By following the steps in the book, I'll help you make a plan that will allow you to commit to accomplishing your goals. No more New Year's resolutions, no more failed plans, just attainable goals. So are you ready to change your life and become a goal getter? Go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash goals today and get your copy of Goal Getters. Your dreams are calling. I think there's some things in your life that maybe you've been running into and you might even be like, I give up. And I want to just cut off that limiting belief from your life right now. Because the word says, with God, all things are possible. And here's the amazing thing about the word all, there is no limit. With God, there is no limit. With His power, there is no limit. And greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. So in Mark 11, 23 and 24, it says, Whosoever, whosoever is you, shall say unto the mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. What is the key in that scripture? He says, shall not doubt in his heart, but believe. So here's the thing. Everybody in the world has limiting beliefs. And I don't know if it was your fourth grade math teacher who you were getting ready to have arithmetic games on the board and you were really excited about it because you finally got addition down and you're feeling pretty good about six plus six is 12 and you can come up with that pretty quick and you're ready to compete and you're ready to feel good and your teacher says, oh, not today, Johnny. We're doing another class. So we're actually gonna have these four people because they scored the highest on the test. And your teacher didn't mean it, but you internalized it as, I'm not good at competing. Other people are better than me. Stay to the back of the class. I'm really bad at math. As a matter of fact, I'm probably really bad at school. I should just sit down, be quiet, and not try again. And then that disappears into your subconscious. And the enemy plays with that to make you feel like, sit down and shut up. Nobody wants to hear from you. So when they talk at a meeting at work today, you're like, oh. Uh, if the boss asks, who wants to volunteer for that? You go, oh. What is that? That's that invisible wall of a limiting belief that the enemy placed in you a million years ago and you don't even know where it came from right now consciously. That's why it says in the Bible, taking captive every high imagination, every thought, every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, taking every thought into captivity. Why? Because there are these thoughts right there. They're running around jungle free in the back of our head and we've got to take them in captivity. We've got to find them so we can address them. How do we address them? We address them with the Word of God so we can reprogram our brain. How do we reprogram our brain? We reprogram it with the Word of God, creating new neural pathways intentionally because the unseen actually creates the seen. You have the thought and the unseen 
biologically, it creates a neuron. The unseen creates the scene. And then every time you have a repeated thought along that line, a protein is expressed in your brain and that neuron grows and it grows a root system. And if that root system becomes strong enough, whether negative or positive, that root system will actually pull on the gray matter of the brain and it will change the way your brain folds. The unseen manifests in the scene. I'm just sharing all this stuff with you today because I believe there are some things that have happened in your past and in your unseen. It's been allowed to change what you see today and the life that you live today. And we're not gonna let the enemy manifest his version of our present or our future anymore. We're gonna become aware of it. We are gonna address it. We are gonna reprogram our brain with the word of God and we are going to be free of it. We're hunting limiting beliefs and we're going to go looking around and finding the very things that have been standing in our way. Some of it has been self-sabotage. We're going to get rid of that today. Some of it has been your history and we're going to get rid of that today. The blood of Jesus is big enough to handle your past. Some are going to be the things that have been echoing in your mind and causing neural pathways. We're going to change that voice and we're going to change that statement today. Today we are going to break free of limiting beliefs and live in the power of God. Can I get an amen? Are there lies that you know that you're believing about yourself? I mean, maybe the enemy has planted them there and hoping that they're going to stay there so you don't break free into the freedom that God has for you. I mean, maybe it's time to renew your mind with the Word of God and believe what He says about you, and He says about your life. Because the enemy's going to try and keep you rooted, but if you can Google those verses, you're going to know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He believes that I have purpose and destiny. He believes I'm a masterpiece created for good works. God can use all things together for the good of those who love Christ Jesus. And before you know it, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. (laughs) I am the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm the one the Lord loves. Before you know it, it's all gone. Whatever you do, don't give up. I mean, you've got to trust God to help you yank up the root and replace it with God's truth and see where your life can go when you take the limits off. Do you know there's an opportunity for you to help others who need encouragement like this? You can partner with us at The Nicole Crank Show, and when you do, you help people find Jesus all over the world on five continents, on national networks, on local networks, in the middle of the night. I mean, we get testimonies like this one I got from Paul, and he said, capital W, capital O, capital W, and he said, thank you, Nicole. And when he says, thank you, Nicole, he really means thank you to everybody. He said, well, you nailed me right between the eyes on my marriage. I've been trying to change a pretty great lady for years and years, and we are both ragged, and the redemptive power subject really connected with me. Do you know that when people share how the show helps them, they're not just sharing it with me, they're sharing it with all of you. You're included in the people who are making a difference. People see my face and they hear my voice, but I'm only able to go into their homes because of the help of people like you. If God's made a difference in your life through this show, would you consider partnering with me to reach more people around the world? You can go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash give and together we can make a bigger difference in people like Paul and his marriage and his wife. Together we make a bigger difference. I'll see you guys next week. Welcome to the Crank Show. Show, 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 show. Go away, mosquitoes. Go away, mosquitoes. Okay, I think we're done.